There's been alarming headlines about the dramatic decline in fertility rates recently. Some experts are even warning it's a crisis. In the 1960s, the average couple had five children. Today, that number is just 2.4. This could be explained by more women prioritizing their careers and the rising cost of children being a deterrent. But there's something else that's rather alarming. Researchers have found that male sperm count has plummeted by 50% since the 1970s. Men are facing a fertility crisis they may not be able to come back from. And falling sperm counts, which may make it impossible to continue the human race. Why is this happening? Sperm quality in men has been rapidly declining. A man today has about half the sperm his grandfather had. A recent study showed that rates have been declining by 1% a year for the past 50 years. Both sperm concentration and overall sperm count declined more than 50%. And it's not only sperm, testosterone levels in men are similar. And rates of miscarriage are climbing. In the US, 9% of men and 11% of women have experienced fertility problems. 12% of women of childbearing age have used an infertility service. Births assisted by fertility treatments increased more than threefold from 1996 to 2015. Not surprisingly, the infertility market is growing rapidly, expected to be a $2 billion industry by 2027. But that's not where the real money is. There's a dark secret the trillion dollar chemical industry would rather you never knew. As fertility rates have continued to decline, profits from big chemical companies have exploded. An industry that is not required to prove their chemicals are safe before exposing the public to them. Nobody knows what these chemicals will do to humans. They've never been tested. Nobody has ever proven them safe. Chemicals we didn't ask for, yet we're exposed to in huge amounts every day. 250 pounds of toxic chemicals per person per day. And their toxic effects on fertility could be alarming. And as much as big chemical companies have worked hard to hide this from us, the weight of evidence is now staggering. This is the story of the chemical attack on fertility. In 1971, after being sold for three decades, the pregnancy drug Stilvestrol was banned. A drug that was given to pregnant women in the United States that was found to cause serious birth defects. And if that wasn't bad enough, it was also linked to causing cancer due to its effects on the hormone estrogen, which is a critical part of this story to understand, which I'll explain in a moment. But what's disturbing is that stilbestrol is very similar to the common chemical BPA, found in many plastics today, such as baby bottles. In fact, it was developed from research originally done on BPA. BPA was first discovered by a Russian chemist, Alexandra Dianin, in 1891. But it wasn't until 1930 that a British chemist, Edward Charles Dodd, tested it for use as an artificial estrogen for the pharmaceutical industry. However, Dodds then moved on to develop Stilbestrol, based on his research on BPA. Both chemicals affect the body's regulation of estrogen. One was banned, the other is everywhere. And in 1950, BPA was used in the development of a new form of plastic called polycarbonate as it made plastic hard, allowing it to have many applications. Kitchenware, receipts, lining of canned food, an estimated 100 tons of it is produced every year. BPA is an endocrine disrupting chemical, or EDC, which means it acts in a similar way to hormones in our body. It binds to hormonal receptors and interferes with the function of reproductive hormones like estrogen and testosterone. The body's hormone system is delicately balanced. When these important hormones are messed with, fertility and pregnancy can be affected. But here's what's really scary. Unlike pharmaceutical drugs, chemicals don't have to prove safety before exposing the public to them. There are many kinds of these hormone disruptors. BPA is from a class called phenols. But there are others as well, such as phthalates, dioxins, parabens, pesticides, and flame retardants. We're exposed to thousands of these potentially harmful chemicals everywhere. In a recent scientific study, 74% of plastic household items were found to contain toxic chemicals. However, perhaps the most disturbing use of these chemicals was during the Vietnam War. The US military sprayed the jungles with a compound called Agent Orange that killed the plants in an effort to starve out the enemy. But the unforeseen side effects of it would be horrific. 
a surprisingly high number of all de birth defects, but particularly certain birth defects, including cleft lip and cleft palate, uh, spina bifida, adrenal uh, gland cancer, acute myeloid leukemia. So what Interestingly, one of the chemicals found at Agent Orange interferes with estrogen receptors in the body. But it wasn't until 1998 that the alarm bells on hormone-disrupting chemicals would be sounded. Dr. Patricia Hunt of Case Western University noticed something strange happening to the eggs of mice she was studying. The quality of the mice eggs deteriorated dramatically from 93% high quality eggs to less than 50% and she was able to isolate the cause being the BPA containing plastic water bottles the mice were being fed through. Dr. Hunt's findings would spark further research into the potentially harmful effects of BPA, and over the next few decades, the research started to stack up. As public awareness grew, the chemical industry responded, developing plastics that touted the heroic label of BPA-free. However, are BPA-free products really better? A 2020 study looked at this and concluded that, according to the research, BPA analogues may result in toxic effects similar to or greater than those of BPA. And another study said BPAF, BPB, BPF, and BPS have been shown to exhibit estrogenic or anti-androgenic activity similar to or greater than that of BPA. In other words, the chemical industry developed new chemicals to replace BPA, such as BPS and BPF, which could be even worse. But sadly, BPA is only one part of the story. Another class of chemicals called parabens could be even worse for fertility. In the 1920s, a new class of chemical called parabens was developed. They act as preservatives in products, killing bacteria and fungi, and are found in products such as shampoo and conditioner, toothpaste, skincare, deodorant, and more. But not only in products, they're now also found in most people too. A 2010 CDC study found that 92% of Americans had paraben and 50% butylparaben. And the Hermosa study found that people who use higher levels of personal care products had higher levels of parabens in their body. They stated, use of personal care products such as makeup, soaps, and sun cream may expose adolescent girls to potential endocrine disruptors, including phthalates, parabens, and other phenols. Parabens can also mess up hormones that may interfere with fertility. Research indicates that paraben levels are associated with a longer time to get pregnant. One study stated the hormone disrupting properties of these environmental chemicals may adversely affect human reproduction. And another study showed an association between parabens and sperm count and quality in men. And then there's phthalates, another hormone disruptor, developed around the same time as parabens, also found in many products, especially beauty products, as it makes artificial scents last longer. On labels of perfume, shampoo, candles, and lotions, it's often disguised as fragrance. They also make plastic more flexible and are used in shower curtains and toys. If your children's plastic toy is flexible, it most likely contains some phthalates. Many such toys often end up in children's mouths too. Phthalates are particularly dangerous as they dissolve into water easily, allowing them to leave the plastic, dissolve into food or water, and get into us and our children. But when it comes to fertility, phthalates are potentially hazardous. Research suggests that exposure can affect sperm and egg quality and be associated with miscarriage. Due to their waterproofing effects, they're often added to food packaging, such as the lining of pizza boxes and other containers. But what's concerning is when they're exposed to heat, they leach out of containers more easily and into food we eat and drink. One study that looked at this concluded that nearly all commercial packaging leached chemicals, even those advertised as BPA-free. They found that 90% of the products leach estrogen chemicals, and some BPA-free ones were the worst. They tested baby bottles, plastic bags, and common food containers, to name a few. When looking at product labels, avoid products with the PVC symbol, as PVC contains phthalates. On labels, you'll often find them referred to like this. There are many classes of these estrogen-disrupting chemicals found in many products, such as sun cream, tap water, water-resistant clothing, vinyl, air freshness, receipts, perfume, nail polish, to name a few. And although escaping their reach completely is almost impossible, the best we can do is reduce our exposure by making better product choices. 
However, there's something else that's not so easy to avoid that could potentially have the most dramatic effect on fertility of all. In order to understand it, we need to look at the famous story of environmentalist Aaron Brockovich, who exposed a dark secret of Pacific Gas and Electric, a power company in Hinckley, California, 1993. The company had legal action taken against them for dumping the chemical Chromium-6, which leached into the local drinking water supply. They ended up paying out a staggering $330 million. However, some experts believe a similar situation could be happening because of a common herbicide we all could be exposed to today. Atrazine is one of the most widely used herbicides in the United States. Used to kill weeds, it's commonly applied to lawns, golf courses, and in farming, it's used on crops like maize, corn, and sugarcane. However, alarmingly, the European Union banned its use in 2004 when they discovered that groundwater levels were too high for safety standards. So what's the concern about atrazine then? When administered to male frogs, atrazine chemically castrates them and even causes some to change their sex entirely. This effect on frogs was discovered by biologist Professor Tyrone Hayes, who made some startling discoveries when doing research on atrazine, which he explains here. All those pesticides that have run off the crops or in that water, destroying immune systems, destroying reproduction, lowering sperm count of frogs. He discovered this effect on reproductive success when exposing frogs to the herbicide, and he reported that male frogs develop fully functioning female organs, among other abnormalities. Hayes voiced his concerns that if atrazine got into water supplies, there could be risk of similar adverse effects in humans. Another scientist, Dr. Shana Swan, also did tests on farm workers in Missouri, testing the quality of sperm atrazine being one chemical looked at. Dr. Swan concluded, these associations between current use pesticides and reduced semen quality suggest that agricultural chemicals may have contributed to the reduction in semen quality in fertile men from mid-Missouri. Whether our drinking water contains levels of herbicides or not is debated, but a wise precautionary step is to filter all water your family's drinking to minimize exposure to potentially harmful chemicals. However, there's something else that can have the same effect on estrogen in men. When Professor Hayes studied the effects of atrazine, he also noted that it activated an enzyme in the body called aromatase, which turns testosterone into estrogen. High levels of estrogen can lead to male fertility issues, among other health complications, like cancer. But there's something else that produces aromatase too. Listen to expert Dr. William Davis explain that fat that surrounds the organs of men can have this effect. Because that visceral fat surrounding your organs expresses an enzyme called aromatase that converts a man's testosterone to estrogens. Which is one reason why visceral fat can be so dangerous. Dr. Davis believes the main cause of visceral fat is overconsumption of grains and sugar. However, perhaps more unsettling is that grains contain a protein called gliden, which the human body can't fully break down. And when digested, it turns into peptides. One of these causes the pituitary gland to produce prolactin, which is the hormone needed by pregnant women to prepare for breastfeeding. In men, however, this can lead to the production of man boobs. So when it comes to supporting the body to naturally balance hormones and remain fertile, Diet is important. Traditionally, in many cultures throughout history, when a couple wanted to get pregnant, they would prepare for months in advance. The Maasai tribe in Africa expects couples to spend six months drinking milk during the wet season when the grass is rich and green to nourish the body. This ritual of preparing the body for pregnancy is seldom done in today's culture, and instead, we're exposed to things like cigarette smokes, processed food, chemicals, and stress, plus alcohol and obesity. However, there's something else interesting about diet that may be an important key when it comes to fertility. Insulin resistance is a state where the body is struggling to regulate blood sugar effectively. At its full extent, type 2 diabetes is the result. In this state, the hormone insulin is elevated consistently. And in women, it can trigger a cascade of events that leads to high levels of testosterone. This can cause a condition known as polycystic ovarian syndrome, a major cause of infertility. So taking steps to control blood sugar regulation is a good idea, such as avoiding sugar and processed foods and removing vegetable oils from your diet. 
And when it comes to men, research has shown that infertile men have lower levels of important omega-3s, DHA and EPA, which can be found in a supplement or eating fish. One study that looked at this concluded that infertile men had lower concentrations of omega-3 fatty acids and sperm compared to fertile men. So although fertility is a complex issue, there are steps we can take to support the body, such as reducing exposure to hormone-disrupting chemicals and providing the body with dietary adjustments helpful for fertility. If you enjoyed watching this video, then make sure to watch our other video on how the food industry intentionally designs food to cause addiction and could be the real reason so many people struggle to lose weight. Just click the image on the screen now.